SCP-050, to the cleverest. Object class, Euclid. Special containment procedures. So far, all attempts to contain SCP-050 have proven fruitless. At present, whoever has possession of SCP-050 is to leave it in an office they use with regularity. Description. SCP-050 appears to be a statue of a monkey reading a book, approximately 1 foot 3 tall. On the bottom of the statue are engraved the words to the cleverest in cursive script. The statue has so far proven resistant to all forms of damage. As such, there is no accurate method to date the object. When left alone, SCP-050 has shown itself to be both useful and antagonistic to its current owner. Although never seen to move, no matter the manner or amount of recordings, any room it is left in becomes very clean, to a polish whenever possible. Paperwork is filed, trash is emptied, and in general, clutter is removed. However, SCP-050 also has a tendency to leave traps for its owner, so current holders should carefully check their offices upon returning. Footnotes 1. Testing to contain SCP-050 has been discontinued at this time. 2. Attempts to leave SCP-050 in unused offices have resulted in it following its owner home. This is a violation of regulations and not to be allowed. 3. One of the quirks of SCP-050 is that no matter what form of measurement is used, any record of said measurements will quickly be replaced by the customary system measurements. 4. Attempts to damage SCP-050 have resulted in increasingly lethal pranks. As of this writing, destruction testing is discontinued. 5. See Document 050. Document 050 The Great Researcher Prank War of Data Expunged on 01 slash Data Expunged slash 2000 Data Expunged During an attempted capture of SCP-963 by Chaos Insurgency Agents, Dr. Bright made use of 963's intrinsic capabilities to make fools of the attempted kidnappers. When Bright returned to his office, he found a monkey statue waiting for him. His office had been tidied in his absence, and everything filed away, which came as something of a shock for the naturally messy Dr. Bright. Upon further investigation, it was found that, despite the apparent tidiness of his office, all of his pens had been drained of all but the last bit of ink, and several important documents had been translated into Aramaic. Dr. Bright immediately began the usual testing of this new SCP, but found himself going nowhere, until Dr. Wright's, as payback for something unspecified, smeared his desk with one half of a compound epoxy, and applied the other half of the compound to his utensils. At this point, SCP-050 vanished from Dr. Bright's office, reappearing in Dr. Wright's office, whereupon 050 began the cleanup again. After several tests, it became apparent that SCP-050 was easily contained, as long as no one outside the Foundation proved to be cleverer than the Foundation scientists. Of course, this led to many of the Foundation scientists seeking to claim the title of most clever for themselves. And thus began the Great Researcher Prank War of Data Expunged. Memorandum 050A, no good will come of this. 05 Data Expunged. Entry 1. Entry 1. Dr. English accesses SCP-705. 705 is allowed access to approximately 100 pounds of similarly colored Play-Doh. After several minutes conversation, the new army retreats to the ventilation shafts. No footage of Dr. Bright's room exists, but several hours later Dr. Bright stumbles out, covered in little red welds and red Play-Doh, swearing and muttering. SCP-050 transfers ownership to Dr. English. Entry 2. At 11.30pm on data expunged, Agent Strelnikov is seen exiting his room in full rage, carrying a machine gun. Smoke pours from the open door of his quarters. Senior researcher Eisendorf is later found to be in possession of 050, proving that a good enough prank will attract 050's attention, no matter the target. Entry 3. At 10.25 am data expunged, Dr. Eisendorf returned from a brief coffee break to discover a type note sitting on his desk, rewritten here. Dr. Eisendorf. 
it seems there was a problem with the class A amnesiac you requested following your SCP-231 assignment. Please hop on the next plane leaving from the site and wait until someone comes and picks you up so that we can get this all sorted out. Cheers. 05 data expunged despite factual and stylistic errors in this note, in appropriately informal style, the fact that there is no overseer 3.14, Dr. Eisendorf apparently took the note seriously and became highly distressed. Dr. Eisendorf boarded the next airplane leaving Site 23, which turned out to be a regularly scheduled flight traveling to Site 19. Dr. Eisendorf apparently did not realize this until landing, at which point he still waited over 8 hours outside the site before a guard found him and asked him what he was doing. Dr. Eisendorf soon confirmed that he had never been assigned to SCP-231 and quickly worked out what had happened. SCP-050 was observed in the office of Dr. Kondraki later that same day. Entry 4. At 7.28pm. Data expunged 2009. Doctor. Kondraki was called away by assistant researcher Horse under the pretense of a SCP-173 containment breach. Security cameras recovered footage of the ensuing prank. Upon returning to his office, Kondraki pauses briefly when he reaches his door. Moments later, he is seen backing slowly out of his office, keeping his eyes fixed on something inside. It was later revealed that Doctor called had placed a replica of SCP-173 in Kondraki's office, positioned in such a way that it faced the door, establishing eye contact with whoever might enter the room. Kondraki continued to retreat until slipping on a hitherto unnoticed puddle of cooking oil. The replica of SCP-173, made of wire frame, paper mash and spray paint, was relocated to Dr. Joseph Cald's office, shortly followed by SCP-050. Entry 5. Upon returning to his office on data, expunged 2009, Doctor. Called was surprised to find the statue replaced with a note, reading, I can't believe no one's thought of this. The statue was later located in the staff locker of Agent Yorick, who had simply stolen it. Entry 6. Statue returned to Called. Yorick's living space in utter disarray. Agent Yorick is found unconscious, the words to be earned, tattooed on his forehead through unknown means. Entry 7. From data. Expunge 2009 to data. Expunge 2009. Maintenance teams were called 27 times to doctor. Called's office while he was out, all having received orders to install, repair, or remove a piece of furniture from the office, apparently at random. Dr. Called became increasingly paranoid about these intrusions, considering his possession of SCP-050 and a data, expunged of data expunged 2009, decided to bring his paperwork and the SCP back to his quarters and work from there. Upon entering his quarters, Dr. Called was doused by the contents of a bucket carefully balanced on the entrance's doorjam. Ownership of SCP-050 changes to Dr. Light. Entry 8. On data. Expunge 2009. Dr. Coleman was seen pinning a notice to the break room notice board which read, due to the effects of SCP data expunged all personnel who have received an amnesiac of any kind within the past 6 months are required to report to Dr. Light immediately. This was signed and notarized by no fewer than 17 members of O5 command and senior staff. After seeing this an email was immediately sent out retracting the information and causing mass panic among some of our more paranoid employees. After what can only be described as a bum rush on Dr. Light's newly refurbished office resulting in the destruction of many items contained within, SCP-050 was found on Dr. Coleman's desk. Entry 9. On data. Expunge 2009. Dr. Coleman was called out of his quarters by an email from an unknown source. Five minutes later, security footage showed Dr. Okagawa entering Shumacher's quarters, carrying a bag with unknown contents, and leaving the room a few minutes later without the bag. Upon returning, Coleman discovered a dead rodent which appeared to have been slathered in the secretions of SCP-447. Personnel in adjacent rooms reported hearing a stream of profanity, followed by a thud. Worried researchers found him passed out on the floor, while the slime was later identified as green gelatin from the kitchen, and the dead rat as a rubber toy. SCP-050 was later found in Dr. Okagawa's office. 
Entry 10. Video Log. Data Expunge 2009. 12.34pm. Dr. Okagawa leaves for the cafeteria, presumably for lunch slash late breakfast. Researcher Chapelsky is seen entering Dr. Okagawa's office, carrying several testing vials and SCP data expunged. Left the office 5 minutes later, closing the door behind him rather hurriedly. Okagawa returns 10 minutes later, opens the door, and is snagged by a large tentacle which pulls him into the office and shuts the door behind him. A security team is dispatched to Okagawa's office and discovers him entangled by a giant squid. The team is seen trying to neutralize the cephalopod and free Okagawa. The animal's remains were subsequently destroyed. SCP-050 has been located in researcher Chapelsky's office. Entry 11. Entry 11. 1. On data expunge 2012 researcher Chapelsky I came into work at approximately 0800 and promptly received a pie in the face, courtesy of Project Director Jones. SCP-050 was found on Project Director Jones' desk later that afternoon. What? That wasn't original at all. Dr. Bright. Entry 11, 2, on data expunge 2012 Project Director Jones reported to his post researching SCP data expunged. Upon entering the facility he was met by researcher Chapelsky I, who threw two pies at his face. SCP-050 was found in researcher Chapelsky I's office 10 minutes later. Entry 11, 3, on data expunge 2012 Chapelsky I entered his office to find Project Director Jones waiting for him with three pies, which he promptly threw at the researcher's face. SCP-050 appeared in Jones' workplace that evening. Guys, I think we broke it. Project Director Jones Entry 11, 4, in the middle of the workday, Dr. Bright entered Jones' research lab with four pies, which he threw in his face. As he was leaving security footage records him saying this better not fucking work. SCP-050 was on Dr. Bright's desk upon his return. Notes. God damn it. Dr. Bright. Okay. No more fucking pies, alright. Project Director Jones, entry dollar sign and on data, expunged 2012, an error occurred in the Foundation main database, reassigning system technician Kent to a squad D hash and at stopping Ted Red Lord Asitoff exclamation point exclamation point 1 exclamation point carrot, hash hash asterisk at GSID the cleaning crews. During the, asterisk, at, sedging of Castle H-E-L-F-I-R-E carrot, hash G-N-M-E-N-T, Joshua Kent was ordered to, plus equals back quote safety H Prince is a schly from the Baron Black Staff exclamation point exclamation point 11 exclamation point 2 exclamation point left curly bracket backslash at, or sewage, with several gallons of fesses, carrot 3 underscore is greater than comma golden p-l-a-t-i-n-u-m dollar sign 9 equals 1 number on his head. During the second half of the assignment, Bang Zero An, at, Sir Ketton and his friends the Magical Knight Bob, had to test several asterisk percent at Ash Super Magic Weapons, dollar sign despite the odor. During this time, a routine system sweep had found a, at dollar sign, barrel of per awesomeness at dollar sign percent at in the database. Despite the numerous nearby systems that could have been infected, SCP, dollar sign, at, dash fout the dread lord on of volcano exclamation point exclamation point one at, percent asterisk concerning system technician Kent's assignment. System technician Kent was returned to site 23 largely unharmed. SCP-050 was discovered sitting by a hard drive heavily infected with SCP-732, with the statue seeming to consider the virus its new owner. Entry 13. Data expunged. Entry 14. Data expunged. Entry 15 on data, expunged 2012, Dr. Light connected the SCP-732 infected hard drive to a scanner, and asked 732. If it could produce lolcat images on request. Its response, presented in the form of an 8000 word erotic story featuring itself, in the form of a man named Lord Kickus Dr. Light, and, redacted, was that with the help of SCP-050 it can do anything. Dr. Light provided SCP-732 with scanned photographs of SCP-577, SCP-529, 
SCP-607, and two instantiations of SCP-331. SCP-732 produced 10 lolcat images for each photograph. Dr. Light then provided SCP-732 with SCP-637 in the form of a drawing by SCP-637-2. As a result of this, SCP-732 was rapidly overwritten with an estimated 63 GB of text describing SCP-637's actions and appearance. Whether this information could have filled all available computer memory is unknown, as the last actions of the Lord Kicker's instantiation were to induce total mechanical mechanical failure to its hard drive. Accompanied by catastrophic uncontrolled oxidation, SCP-050 was found in Dr. Light's office the next morning. Note, SCP-637-2 reports that SCP-637 was not harmed by its venture into SCP-732, but that its fur was really messed up. Note, other copies of SCP-732 seem unaffected by the suicide of Lord Kickass. End of file.